This is The Befuddlement Draft, written by a yellow marshmallow and read by Lala's Podfix. Epilogue. You'll slip one day, Potter. Harry heard a familiar voice call as he was swinging his legs over the side of the astronomy tower. Don't expect me to jump after you. Harry laughed, not removing his eyes from the horizon as Draco sat down next to him. Wouldn't want to mess up your hair, he teased. It wouldn't just mess up my hair. It would make it look worse than yours, Draco sniffed, linking his fingers with Harry's. Oi, Harry chuckled, bumping his shoulder with Draco's. Draco frowned, lifting a hand to run through Harry's hair. It really is atrociously unkempt, he said, leaning into Harry, who blushed. Have you even heard of a comb? Harry glared playfully at Draco. No, he deadpanned, and Draco looked shocked for a minute before realizing Harry was being sarcastic. You're a right git, you know, Draco drawled. The two sat in silence, soaking in each other's presence and the last warm of the setting sun. It was difficult to process everything that had happened over the past few months, but they had been there for each other through it all. Once Sirius had left to talk to the Order, Harry spent hours pacing the boys' dormitory, waiting to hear from Sirius, from anyone, really. He paced until his feet began to ache, and then paced some more. Draco stayed with Harry when the others left for dinner, trying to persuade him to join them in the Great Hall, but Harry refused. He didn't want to miss Sirius' call. Harry tried to persuade Draco to go eat, but he refused to leave Harry by himself. You're a hazard, Harry. You attract trouble. I'm staying with you. He almost cried when he heard Sirius' voice calling out through the mirror. He felt as if he'd walked into the Gryffindor common room, the heat of the fires washing over his body and his shoulders relaxing. Sirius wasn't alone when he returned, as Remus was sat next to him, looking worse for wear. As soon as Sirius called the order, everyone went straight for the Ministry to apprehend the Death Eaters. Sirius kept his promise to Harry, despite wanting to join the others, particularly Remus. Harry checked with Remus to see if Sirius was telling the truth. He was. Remus recounted the events that had transpired at the Ministry, explaining that it had been a prophecy they were after, but Dumbledore refused to share what it was about with anyone other than Harry. It's best you pay him a visit when you can, Cub. He might change his mind on the subject. Harry felt cold relief course through his veins as he heard that no one died. He was also glad to hear that the Order had managed to arrest some of the Death Eaters who were there. However, when Harry asked who had been arrested, Sirius went rigid and Remus looked somewhat pained. Remus asked if Draco was with him, and Harry watched as Draco stiffened too, looking sickly pale as Harry nodded slowly, piecing it together. Lucius Malfoy was among those arrested. In that moment, Draco looked not only pained, but completely unfazed. His face couldn't decide on an expression of how he was feeling. He looked like he was about to faint or be sick. Harry dropped the mirror and tackled Draco in a hug, hoping that Draco could understand what he was trying to convey. It's okay. You'll be okay. Draco pulled himself from Harry's arms, trying to assure Harry he was all right, but Harry knew he wasn't. Harry also knew it was not a subject he should pry his way into, and the best thing he could do for Draco in that moment was let him know he was there. Begrudgingly, Harry returned to Sirius and Remus. However, he made sure to keep his fingers entwined with Draco's. Remus then said that Voldemort had shown up, expecting to find Harry, but instead finding the Minister for Magic and Dumbledore. Harry took a few seconds to process what Remus had said, but knew that only meant one thing. The Ministry knew Voldemort was back, and if the Ministry knew he wasn't lying, then... Sirius grinned and looked as if he was about to burst, interrupting Remus to explain that this meant that the Minister was reconsidering his case, and that Tonks, Shacklebolt, and Remus had managed to get him a trial. He was going to be a free man, which meant Harry could live with them and maybe even be adopted by Sirius. When Sirius' trial? Draco asked, as Harry leaned his head on Draco's shoulder. Next week, Harry said, smiling. So I'm staying at the Burrow for a week, and then I'll move to Black Manor, I think. Sirius hates the place, but I'm not sure if they have anywhere else at the moment. Draco hummed, his hand still running through Harry's hair. At least you won't be with those assholes who should be killed painfully. But I know, he paused, smiling at Harry, who rolled his eyes. You said I'm not allowed to kill them, which is completely ridiculous. You are not killing my aunt and uncle, Draco, Harry said for what felt like the millionth time. Draco smirked. I could make it look like an accident. No, Harry said again. No one is killing anyone. Harry chuckled as Draco sighed dramatically. And here I thought Gryffindors were supposed to be fun, Draco scoffed, and Harry rolled his eyes. He tilted his head and kissed Draco on the cheek. I'm fun. I just don't consider murder fun, he smiled, and Draco pouted, making Harry chuckle and gently press his lips to Draco's. Have you heard from your mother yet? Harry asked, knowing Draco had been waiting all week for a response. Draco stiffened slightly, then rubbed the bridge of his nose with a sigh. I got a letter this morning after breakfast, he explained. She's staying with a friend of hers in France. Draco stopped, his fingers tangled with Harry's hair, unmoving. She wants me to join her as soon as possible. Harry bolted upright. Will you go? he asked. 
It was, after all, the safest option. He didn't like the idea of Draco leaving the country to spend Merlin knows how long away from him, but it would be safe and far away from Lucius and Voldemort. I won't, Draco whispered, blinking rapidly. Why? Harry asked. He watched as Draco bit back a laugh. Harry, I'm known to be quite a reckless idiot now and then. He smirked, and Harry groaned, remembering the potions incident. Maybe after a bit of befuddlement draft, but not on a daily basis, Harry pointed out with a smile. Draco gnawed on his bottom lip, as if it would stop him from saying something he would possibly regret. I, he said, I never actually drank that potion, you know. He cringed, his face turning pink. Harry's jaw practically hit the floor. I, you, it didn't, what? He stumbled over his words, watching as Draco looked more and more worried. I didn't know what would happen if I'd mentioned that my father wanted me to take the mark or something, and I panicked. I switched the files, Draco explained. Harry stared at Draco for a moment, watching as a blush creeped up the back of his neck. Then Harry burst into laughter, unable to control himself, and Draco relaxed. You are so fucking adorable, he heaved, chuckling as Draco went pink. Yes, yes, he scowled, waving a hand dismissively. I use the potion as an excuse to have a moment of virtue, but I swear to Salazar Potter, if you tell a single soul, don't worry, I won't, Harry grinned, feeling giddy. However, after a moment he frowned. Where will you be staying? Are you taking up the order's offer? Harry asked, worried that Draco might have nowhere besides the Malfoy Manor to go. Draco shook his head. As tempting as your godfather's offer was, Pansy would berate me with constant letters, so I've decided to grace the Parkinson's with my presence. He drawled, and Harry rolled his eyes, smiling. Will you be safe there? He asked, unsure of the Parkinson's allegiance to Voldemort. The blonde nodded. The Parkinson's are one of the few neutral pureblood families. They refuse to get involved on either side, but they're willing to overlook that for one summer. They rather like the idea of Pansy and I getting married one day, I think. Draco shook his head, looking completely disgusted by the idea. Obviously, she's not my type, he explained, looking over at Harry. Obviously not, Harry grinned. She'd need glasses, I believe. Harry joked, and Draco laughed. I was going along the lines of her being female, but that works too. Draco grinned. Anyway, they've agreed to let me stay for the summer, and that's more than I could have asked for. I'll write to you, and you'll visit me at Sirius's? Harry asked pleadingly. Of course you saw. You'll go spare without me, Draco smirked, kissing Harry's cheek. You'll trip over everything in a five-foot radius, he joked, and Harry tried to act offended, but part of him knew it was true. That only happens around you, love. Harry said, which was partially true. It did happen more around Draco. Then I'll have to catch you, Draco replied, and Harry grinned. Merlin, it's all fucked up, isn't it? This is really happening. Draco breathed, shivering slightly as he watched a bird fly by. It is, Harry replied, holding Draco tighter. But we have each other. My father's in Azkaban. Voldemort is probably after the Malfoy family's blood. I'm dating his number one enemy. Draco frowned, and Harry was worried he regretted his choices. But I wouldn't change it. Fuck Voldemort, he said, laughing. <laughs> Fuck Voldemort, he laughed, speaking louder this time. I'm glad you don't regret it, Harry admitted, smiling sheepishly. Draco furrowed his eyebrows. I may be scared out of my wits, but I have faith in you. And most of the order, I suppose, he shrugged. I'll keep you safe, Harry said determined. I'll keep you safer, Draco said, smirking as Harry raised an eyebrow. I'll keep you the safest, Harry retorted, and Draco rolled his eyes. I'll keep you safer than the safest, he shrugged, and Harry looked bewildered. Come on, Potter, I've never backed down from a challenge, he said, his smirk widening into a grin. I'll protect you. And I you, Scarhead. Oh, sod off, ferret face, I'm trying to be sentimental. As was I, you git. Pratt. The End Reader's Notes. Thank you so much for listening. It took me a while to get into Drary as a pairing, and this is one of the first Drary fics that I ever really fell in love with. So thank you so much to Yellow Marshmallow for letting me record this. Please go to archiveofverone.org slash works slash 263-28079 slash chapters slash 64112689 to leave comments and kudos. Also, I just want to say, I don't support any of J.K. Rowling's transphobic BS, so please don't give her any of your money and instead enjoy alternative Harry Potter content like this. Have a great rest of your day.